Hello, my name is Anna and I would like to share with you my testimony of how I, um, from uh, being born as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, um, how I ended up uh, in the place where I am now. That is, um, I am Christian, I'm a born-again Christian, I am uh, living for God, I am filled with His Holy Spirit and I'd like to explain to you um, how this happened to me, I'd like to tell you uh, my life story. So hopefully uh, if there's anybody there who uh, is or was a Jehovah's Witness, um, maybe they can find something helpful in my testimony. Or uh, if um, any of you are not Jehovah's Witnesses but would like to find out um, what, uh, what happens in that religion, why people live and maybe um, you can share my testimony with somebody who is um, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, um, you can maybe find it useful. So, um, yes, so uh, I'd like to start here. So um, now um, this uh, story of me leaving Jehovah's Witnesses um, happened uh, maybe two or three years ago already. So I am not as shocked and excited and bewildered anymore. Uh, it has become much more uh, normal to me. So maybe I'll not be able to explain exactly how I would have explained it uh, at that time, but I hope that this testimony will still be useful uh, nevertheless. Um, so uh, to start, I was uh, born into a family of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, my dad um, is a Jehovah's Witness, was and is a Jehovah's Witness um, since he was um, maybe 20, 20 years old. And um, his mom is a Jehovah's Witness, my aunties, my uncles are Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, so that's the family on, on my dad's side. Uh, but uh, my family on my mom's side are not Jehovah's Witnesses. We are from Poland. And they are, um, uh, Poland is a Catholic country, so um, the family on, on my mom's side are um, Roman Catholics. Uh, so they, um, they don't really practice anyway, like um, many um, Catholic people don't. Uh, but yes, but this is their background. So my parents, uh, in my family, my dad was a Jehovah's Witness and my mom wasn't. Um, so uh, from the moment I was born, uh, my dad was already a Jehovah's Witness. I was already uh, taken to the meetings as a newborn, uh, as a very tiny baby. Uh, my dad would take me there. Um, everybody would be very excited about my dad being such a good Jehovah's Witness, bringing his little baby daughter uh, alone to the meetings, all the ladies there uh, who were um, later on aunties to me, uh, they would take care of me and change my nappies and uh, so I, I grew up um, just um, being a Jehovah's Witness uh, in that sense that I would go to all the meetings and my mom never had any problem with my dad taking me uh, to the Kingdom Hall. She, I think she, because she didn't have any uh, faith on, of her own, she thought that's fine, you know, he's just the, the, the kids, me and my sister who's um, 10 years older, they are spending some good time, you know, with some um, quality people and that's all right, they can go there. So I was um, raised up as a Jehovah's Witness from the start, uh, going, um, um, preaching, the door to door ministry um, since I was very little, uh, doing of course all the all the all the things that Jehovah's Witnesses do. Not sure how many of you know exactly um, about about this religion. Um, there are many many components to it. Um, maybe now it's it's not the time to to explain exactly. But yes, we um, when I was a child there were uh, three meetings a week. 
um, two at the Kingdom Hall, one uh, in in um, in brothers and sisters' houses, and then um, we would go um, preaching every Saturday and Sunday um, to their ministry. Yes, so that was it. Of course, um, I believed, as all the Jehovah's Witnesses do, that uh, this religion is the only true religion, that only Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians, uh, that only they have the truth, only they know the truth about the world, about um, the, the world to come, about the Armageddon that is coming very soon, and uh, the only way for people to be saved is to become Jehovah's Witnesses. If they do not become Jehovah's Witnesses, they will be killed by Jehovah God in Armageddon um, and they will not live anymore after that. Um, of course, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that um, most of them I think there are around 8 million um, Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide now. So they believe that most of them, uh, after Armageddon, uh, the new, um, in the new world, um, they will live in a paradise that is going to be here on Earth. So they believe that most of them will be on Earth, living in the paradise here. In paradise here but that the um, only small small group of Jehovah's Witnesses small flock of 144,000 uh, these people will go to heaven and only these people will go to heaven and uh, so they believe that the New Testament uh, was written um, for our for our information for the for the bigger groups information but not directly to them. It is written directly to the people who are going to go to heaven. So um, all the information that is there about going to heaven, about rapture, about being baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's, it isn't directed at a, at a 21st century Jehovah's Witness. It is directed at the people who will go to heaven. So only a very small group of Jehovah's Witnesses, only um, very, very holy Jehovah's Witnesses would have that hope. Um, of course, if you ask, they would say, no, no, that's not true, not very holy. But the um, common um, thinking, if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, is that only someone very, very holy, good, um, like the best best example of a best Jehovah's Witness will go to heaven. And how do they know? They know because they know. They have um, an inside knowledge from God that they're going to heaven. So if you don't have that absolute sureness that you're going to heaven, then you're not going. It's only the ones that have this absolute um, knowledge from God that they are going to be in heaven uh, that are going to, to go to heaven. Um, yes, so um, that's this part. I was growing up as um, a Jehovah's Witness in these circumstances um, and this was um, ongoing. Uh, of course, yes, we believed that only we have the um, knowledge of the world so we believe that everybody else in the world uh, is fooled, is fooled by Satan into not being a Jehovah's Witness. So only people who, uh, who are Jehovah's Witnesses, only they will be saved, only they know the truth about the world, about everything around the world. Um, only they have the correct understanding of the Bible. Anybody else is just um, blinded by Satan. So. It's a very, it's a very difficult situation to be in, because you, as a Jehovah's Witness, you are a single child in a in a classroom in your school, and you think that you are the only one who knows the truth about the entire world, that you are from a community that knows the truth, 
and everybody then there knows the truth but everybody else doesn't know everybody else is fooled by satan everybody else is going to die in armageddon so it's like you're not part of them at all and you're asked in your religion you are asked not to be part of them so you are not to become close friends with people from the outside um you you cannot um you can only sort of you are there to to tell them to become jehovah's witnesses you're not there to be their friend uh of course uh, jehovah's witnesses cannot uh, they don't celebrate birthdays or christmas so that's always a big talking point because you cannot go to a birthday party you cannot draw a christmas tree during a christmas class or at school or whatever so you're always different and um, it depends what kind of a person you are some kids found it really difficult because they would always stick out and um, they would feel very embarrassed and it would be very difficult for them uh, some kids, and I think I was one of them, would be a bit proud of it, a bit, um, you know, feeling a bit better than others, being um, able to, uh, being happy to be able to tell others about their religion, and so on. So I think I was in this um, second category. And um, yeah, so this was my life. And then as I uh, grew into my adolescence, I became a little bit more rebellious. I would hang out with the with the naughty Jehovah's Witness kids, so we would um, um, like you know not not listen at the meetings, laugh, speak, talk. Um, maybe even outside of the of the kingdom hall, you know, hide away, and uh, later on even try drinking beer and all of this. And um, I was already around maybe 14 or 15 and I also started having friends outside of the organization, the Jehovah's Witness organization. I was, um, I was going to some parties with them and I really wanted to be friends with them because they were really cool kids in my opinion. And uh, then um, I uh, met this um, a boy who I wanted to, to be my boyfriend and then slowly um, I I didn't mention that and my parents got divorced when I was eight so I was from then on I was living with my mom who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness but I was still um, going to the meetings she was dropping me at the meetings and so on but I sort of um, was supported by her in that other lifestyle as well in that non Jehovah's Witness lifestyle. Uh, so when it came to that point where I really wanted to have friends and party and have a boyfriend, um, she um, she made me uh, speak to my dad and tell him about these things. And my dad said, well, but how can you do these things if you're a Jehovah's Witness? And I said, well, you know what, that actually I was thinking I want to have a break from being a Jehovah's Witness. I want to have a little break. I want to see how it is. Maybe I don't feel like it. So it became a big drama. <clears throat> my dad first told me that I'm not his daughter anymore and so on. And my sister would try and come with some Jehovah's Witness friends to convince me to stay and so on. But I was really um, confident that I want to take a break, just a break. So nothing harmful in my mind because it's just a break. So... Um, Yes, so I, I stopped going to the meetings then. And I started to lead a normal worldly lifestyle of a, of a teenager. Um, so just, um, yeah, just having many friends, partying, speaking to different people and really enjoying myself and really um, becoming very popular at school and oh, doing all the cool things with the cool kids it was very important to me. And I was living this lifestyle for a while, and I think I um, I felt a big relief at first um, to stop being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, to suddenly all the rules were gone. I no longer had to worry about uh, not drinking or not having friends from or just not going somewhere 
to the kingdom all the time and like I was just free. I could be who I am. I, I had these dreams that I would become an actress and now I could fulfill them and like I felt very free. And that was, um, that was it. Um, but um, that was for only a very short while. Um, because Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't really have God. They believe in God, they believe in Jehovah God, but their relationship is not with the true God, with the true God of the Bible, with the God that he is. So I never, as a child and um, as a teenager, I never had a relationship with God. I knew that I have to serve him, that I need to be really obedient to him, that he might kill me in Armageddon, that he is really difficult to please, but I really need to try, that he really loves me, but he really wants me to be obedient. And so that was a very difficult relationship because it was only on head level. Um, I, I knew of him, but I didn't know him and this is not who God is anyway. So in my life at that, at that moment, I never had a relationship with God. And so I didn't even know it. And I soon started feeling very empty, lonely, lost um, as a teenager. I would really always need to be around people, around um, friends and or, or my boyfriend and I was never able to stay alone. I was never able to stay idle. I always had to have some entertainment because if I was idle then very soon I would start feeling very lonely inside, very empty, very lost, very scared and um, yes, and it was very sad and uh, I started um, developing um, some um, fears um, and um, the, actually it was one fear. I started developing a fear of demons because Jehovah's Witnesses, they are taught to be very scared of demons, that the demons can attack you, that, that on the outside, in the outside world, the demons will attack you, the demons will do this to you, do that to you. And so I, I had, I didn't, I didn't realize knowing it, but I started really fearing demons. At night, in the evening, I'd be feeling like something is in the room, I'd hear a noise, and I'd start having panic attacks. So in the evenings, I was unable to stay alone. I would always need to have some music on or uh, sleep with my mom. I would have really bad panic attacks. Um, it was really terrible. I was really terrified. I really didn't know what was going on at all. I was uh, maybe um, 17 or 18 at that time. And it was really terrible. I didn't know if I'm going crazy or if I'm possessed. I was so scared of being possessed. And um, it was really, really scary. And um, so finally, um, uh, my mom, uh, she organized uh, some psychotherapy for me. So I went to this um, psychotherapist lady and she um, basically we had, I think, maybe 12 sessions together. And basically she she told me, she, she explained to me in, in the process that what the reason I am uh, feeling so fearful the reason i am feeling feeling fear is because uh, of guilt of leaving jehovah's witnesses and it made a lot of sense and um i i don't remember exactly if it was because of this diagnosis or anyway slowly the fear went away but it was a it was a short episode but it was really intense really terrifying panic attacks like like fear when you fall when you when you have that feeling that you're falling down that that fear that second of fear i was feeling that fear for let's say minutes i was really terrified i really thought that i cannot take this fear that i might commit suicide because i won't be able to handle that fear and it was really terrible 
and um, yes but this episode ended um, in the meantime um, my dad he left to live in the United Kingdom uh, he left to live and work in the United Kingdom and um, I was going to after finishing high school after my A-levels I was going to go and join him and stay with my dad for one year have a gap year and then go back to Poland and enroll in my um, acting school that I really wanted to go to. I really wanted to prepare during that year and I really wanted to go there. And um, so I came to London to stay with my dad. And that sort of... Um, um, in, the, in the meantime, I... Um, I ended up staying in London for to do a university degree. During that year, um, I met a friend with a friend who was going to study in London, and I um, asked her for the details of um, how to get enrolled in a university here. So I, uh, I ended up applying and I ended up being accepted. So I ended up staying in London to do my university degree, and. Um, Yes, so uh, being in London was really shocking to me because I was for the first time without my friends, without my circle, without the parties, without feeling liked, without being popular or whatever. And I felt really, really terrible, really lonely, really as if the, the, that, um, you know, friends and parting situation was everything I had in my life, everything I had to stand for, that I had somewhere to go, I had someone to be with, and now suddenly in London I was completely, completely alone. And it was really, really difficult. Even uh, during my university times, I couldn't feel at home here at all it was really difficult and i felt really empty really lonely i made some friends eventually was able to go to some parties but i never i never felt at home and my that the inside of me was just crying like i was completely empty completely lonely and at this stage i thought that that emptiness, that loneliness is because I'm just a people person. I will, I'd like to have a lot, a lot of friends. I'd like to be surrounded by people. And this is why I'm feeling this loneliness and emptiness. That's what I thought. That just because I don't have tons of friends, that this is the reason why I, I feel lonely and empty. And of course, I tried to do everything right. I tried to, after um, finishing university, um, sorry, no, that's um, during university, I tried to have a job, to work out, to do all the right things. And I thought that it will make me feel good, but it never did. I could never be at peace. And I, um, so from the moment I left Jehovah's Witnesses at 15, um, till I came back so um, that was almost by the end of my master's degree so that was um, four and a half years in London so from the moment I left at 15 and until that point it was nine years until until the moment I came back it was nine years so when I was nearing uh, these nine years when I was nearing the point when I would come back um, to be a Jehovah's Witness, I was feeling terribly empty and I thought I was starting to, maybe last two years, I was starting to think that uh, maybe the only option for me to be happy, maybe the only place where I can find meaning, maybe the entire reason why I'm feeling empty and unhappy is because I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, that maybe my only option to feel good and normal and don't have this fear, the fear of people, fear of new places, just this constant fear is to, and, and loneliness and emptiness, is to go back and, and 
be a Jehovah's Witness. And it sounded, it seemed like a big sacrifice to me because um, I knew about all the rules that I ran away from. About the no, not, not um, having friends, not enjoying myself and so on. And I was really, really sad. I really didn't want to go back. I really didn't want to be back there. But I thought maybe there's no other... Maybe there's no other way. Maybe I have to go back. So these thoughts were happening. Uh, they were coming to me more and more often. And um, be just before I came back, two things happened. Um, just in a matter of days. I think it was just a couple of days uh, between these two things. So um, I was uh, going to meet my friends and I was... Um, waiting outside of a tube station and some Christian gentleman um, came over and he gave me a leaflet uh, some Christian leaflet I don't have it I don't know what was there um, but he said to me then he said to me these words he said the loneliness you feel in your heart is an empty space for God and I didn't, I just, I didn't want to talk to him. I thought he's just some Christian preacher, of course, only Jehovah's Witnesses, no God and whatever. So I, I completely didn't, at this point, I didn't realize how significant this was. And um, so a couple of days, a um, couple of days later, my dad, um, I was having a conversation with my dad. Mm when I was telling him, you know, I'll never find anything happiness outside of, um, like in this world and so on. And he said, well, you can find what you need inside of the, inside of the organization, inside. And I said, dad, but just, you know, I'll not come back just for my, you know, my, my benefit. And um, he started saying to me that, you know, any reason is good. Jehovah is waiting for you. Jehovah loves you. He cares about you. He, you know, he started saying things like this. And at this moment, I went into a hysteria. I started crying like, like a child, deeply from the deepest place of my soul, hearing when my dad was saying that God loves me so much, that Jehovah loves me so much and is waiting for me and I just, the tears, I couldn't believe. I I couldn't understand. I couldn't stop crying. There's, well, he was speaking to me for maybe half an hour, maybe to one hour, and I was all this time I was crying. And I, at this moment, I understood, wow. So I really love Jehovah. I really love him so much. I really love God so much. So I need to go back. So that's it. I'm going back. And so I came back. I came to the congregation of my dad here in London and I was really extremely excited. I started, of course, going to all the meetings, um, started having my Bible study, started going um, ministry, uh, became a publisher. That's a, that's, that, that's a Jehovah's Witness, basically, like a first first stage of initiation of a Jehovah's Witness where you can um, go preaching. I cannot recall now if you can go, um, if you can do ministry without being a publisher, but basically to be an independent first stage of Jehovah's Witness, you, you become a publisher. And so I became that and um, I started praying a lot and reading the Bible a lot. And I think at this time, um, I cannot exactly remember at or which point in time, but around this time, I um, I think I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, I started feeling on fire for God, like just absolutely euphoric and crazy about God, crazy about praying, crazy about reading the Bible, crazy about serving God, just happiness that was inexplicable just just my entire 
person, my entire inside changed. I, I just, I became happy, I became full and um, my, the loneliness, the emptiness that I was feeling, it just disappeared. It never came back. It was just gone. And I was really euphoric and I was really happy to be back in, in the organization. I couldn't understand why, how could I have ever left. And um, that was absolutely amazing. And um, that was that sort of a uh, very happy, happy moment for me. And, uh, but at the same time, I was feeling this um, very happy feelings when I was at home, when I was praying, when I was reading my Bible, I was feeling the Holy Spirit inside of me working and strengthening me and really being inside of me. But during the meetings at the Kingdom Hall, I was feeling something really weird. I was feeling really bad. I was feeling really ostracized. I was feeling really uneasy, like sort of everybody's uh, watching me, nobody's friendly here, nobody has that thing about them and I started feeling really really bad there. I just couldn't be there, I just felt really really off, really terrible and um, at the same time um, I started wondering whether I am called to heaven because I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and I really felt God and I really at, mom at some moments I felt like he's calling me to heaven but I knew that I cannot be the one who's called to heaven because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that only the very good ones not the ones who left for nine years and came back later which is really a terrible person to to ever live these ones they don't become anointed they don't go to heaven but i had this feelings of of going to heaven and i started looking in my bible reading about um you know in new testament about going to heaven about the rapture the heavenly calling everything that we have as christians and I just couldn't understand how come I don't have it. How come Jehovah's Witnesses say that there are two hopes? How can I become convinced that there really are two hopes? That I am going to live on earth and not go to heaven. So it was a, a really situation where I was trying to convince myself that Jehovah's Witnesses have the truth, that they are right about what they're saying that I just need to dig deeper in the Bible and of course I'll see it and understand it. But as I was digging deeper into the Bible, as many ex jehovahs Witnesses who did that know, as I was digging deeper into the Bible, all I was finding is a thing that was completely opposite to what they are teaching. So I was finding everything about heavenly calling, about uh, Christians being baptized with the Holy Spirit, about this, this, and not about what Jehovah's Witnesses were saying. So I was really, really torn and I didn't know what to think, but I really knew I have to be a Jehovah's Witness. Witness. I really knew I want to be one because that's the only thing in the world. That's the only place that has the truth. That's the only place that is ever going to make me happy. So I really knew that I have to stay, but I was really torn. And I really was trying to read lots of literature the Jehovah's Witness literature to convince myself that this is the truth, that this is right, that to to really set myself in there. But I was really panicking because I could see that I'm not convinced that this is the truth. And I was being really terrified that all the Jehovah's Witnesses might see that I don't think that this is the truth. And I was really not feeling well there at the Kingdom Hall and during their worship which is not really worship but 
during their teaching and everything. And I even, um, I went to uh, the lady that I was having my Bible study with and she said something along the lines, oh yeah, you're not feeling very well, I see. You know, maybe you're having some mental problems. That's a, that's a typical thinking of a Jehovah's Witness. Like if you're not feeling well in the organization, if something is wrong, you're not, you're, you know, you're starting to see that something is wrong. That means you're having a mental issue. So that was it. And um, so, of course, I believed that because I had uh, some anxiety disorder before. I never thought that I am good or uh, normal. So obviously, I believed that that something is probably wrong with me. But uh, I started at the same time. I started texting my friends um, who were my friends when I was young um, in the Jehovah's Witness organization. So I started texting them and saying, listen, please, is this the truth? You know, because Jehovah's Witnesses, they call their organization, they call it the truth. So I was asking them, is this the truth? Can you please convince me, help me? Is it the truth? And the first person I texted uh, said, well, of course, it is the truth. It has to be the truth. You just need to read more literature and, you know, and you're going to be fine. Then um, the second person said, oh, I cannot be a Jehovah's Witness because it's too much, you know, too much trouble uh, for me. I, I suggest you look into Buddhism. And then the third one said, you know what? Um, please see this website. And you can see this website because it is not an apostate website. So Jehovah's Witnesses, they have this thing where if anybody leaves their religion and speaks against the religion, they're an apostate. So if anybody leaves Jehovah's Witnesses and speaks against them, this person is an apostate, which is basically uh, the worst demonic, demon-possessed, scary person that you can ever meet. Really terrifying and really evil person. So that's the that's the view we have or we had of apostates. So you absolutely, if they write anything, if they have any website, of course you absolutely cannot read it, and you will be kicked out of uh, the organization. You will be disfellowshipped if you read a website like this. So obviously this was not an apostate website, so I could read it because this website was written by a gentleman who he was um, never a Jehovah's Witness. His wife became a Jehovah's Witness, so he became very interested in proving from the Bible why Jehovah's Witnesses do not have the truth and from their own literature. So just the Bible and Jehovah's Witness literature and maybe some maybe some historical or you know some other sources but yes this this most importantly the Bible and Jehovah's Witness literature. So I went onto that website and he had a ton of articles about every doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses about the two hopes, about um, Yes, about going to heaven, about being... Uh, I don't remember if it was about being baptized with the Holy Spirit, but loads of, of different things. And uh, about hell, about different things. I cannot recall at this moment, but really a lot. And I started reading them, and they were all showing... from the Bible, also showing that the translation of Jehovah's Witness Bible is wrong, is... Um, is just skewed to fit their doctrine and it can be seen in many places i have really explored this uh, where from the original greek they don't translate how other translators do they don't translate as it is they really change the words the the positioning of words to to fit their doctrine and it really is the case so even their bible makes it much harder to understand 
the true the true truth the true doctrine but nevertheless there are many Jehovah's Witnesses who reading that only uh, new world translation Jehovah's Witnesses translation they they also understood the truth so it's not a such a big hurdle but it is one of the things so I started reading these things and I started seeing that yes indeed these are the things I was thinking about this shows how the verses uh, that Jehovah's Witnesses use, they are completely out of context. Uh, they are completely wrong, wrongly used and explained. And um, of course, um, one of the big things, I don't know if I realized this at this stage or a little bit later, was that Jehovah's Witnesses, they completely omit Jesus. They focus on Jehovah God and Jehovah God is that for them is a, that God or God of the Old Testament I would say and only that so it's as if God as if our understanding of God didn't change because of, of New Testament because of Jesus coming because of the new covenant being there it's as if God is just exactly I know God is exactly like he was in the Old Testament. I know he is, but it's as if they don't know anything more apart from the Old Testament. So that's that's God Jehovah and that's how it is. We need to serve him, we need to pray to him, we need to be with him and there's nobody else. Whereas there obviously is Jesus and we need to come to Jesus, we need to, our only way to come to God, to come to salvation is through Jesus. So they, obviously they don't know this at all and they don't, they, they, of course they know, but they don't really act on it. They, Jesus is really um, a separate person for them. He's not w one with God. He's um, just very aside for them. So I do not know if I uh, found out this biggest information, biggest piece of information that there is, um, that they have wrong, which is their entire, um, the entire way that they relate to Jesus. Um, so I am I'm not entirely sure if I found it out at this time, but all the things that I was finding out were so groundbreaking to me and they sounded really, really um, correct. What this uh, gentleman was saying seemed absolutely correct and I was reading all these doctrines day and night. I just couldn't believe but um, at the same time, I started having the worst panic attacks that I ever had. And I was just completely, my mind was shattered. I just couldn't understand what is happening. I didn't know anymore. I thought that maybe Satan is attacking me with that information. Then I thought that maybe Satan is with the Jehovah's Witnesses. I just didn't know, I couldn't understand, I didn't know who God is anymore. I didn't know what is true, what is not. And I started having really bad panic attacks. And I, well, especially when I would decide that I need to leave Jehovah's Witnesses. Then I would have terrible panic attacks. And only when deciding that, okay, I would stay, it would calm down. Or when I would read the Bible. So I... I, had, I think at this stage I had a mental breakdown because I was really afraid of speaking to people, of going out of home. I was really all the time crying. Um, it was really difficult and I would have these terrible uh, panic attacks when I would think that I need to leave Jehovah's Witnesses. So I ended up deciding that I need to stay. That I just, because these panic attacks were so terrible, I didn't want to feel this way. So I decided that I need to stay. And then um, 
uh, I was um, given uh, given for a Bible study. I was given uh, this lady who was um, supposed to be like a like a geeky person who really knows the Bible, really knows everything. Is really intelligent. Really is going to help me uh, and explain everything to me. And uh, so I really was of, of the mindset that I really want to convince myself that Jehovah's Witnesses have the proof. That I will really find it out and I will really convince myself. And um, that just didn't happen. Uh, she was trying to explain to me. We were trying to look together in, in the literature. It just wasn't there. It's not there because it's not true. And the Bible is very clear and what is in the Bible is very clear. And so the truth the truth is out there to be found and it will always defend itself. And a lie, which um, Jehovah's Witnesses doctrine is, will never defend itself. And and their, their doctrine was not able to defend itself at all. And when I was, um, especially the, my, my, my biggest problem was all the time the two hopes. So the eternal hope and the hope for uh, living on paradise earth. So Jehovah's Witnesses call it two hopes. So when I was talking to her and when I was uh, showing her the verses and asking her and telling her what I see in the Bible, she would, this lady who was a Jehovah's Witness all her life and very respected and everything eldest wife she would say that even she when she's talking to me even she is confused about this doctrine and even she stops seeing it as Jehovah's Witnesses say and that she really needs to remind herself of what she believes in so she was a bit confused as well and I think she is to this day because um, I kept in touch with her uh, a little bit even after leaving and trying to tell her many things um, so yeah so that was um, that was what happened so I knew that I cannot um, cannot find my answers and I slowly started reading real Christian sources um, Christian Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christian people so I started reading Christian books and slowly started discovering God, discovering who He is. It was matching the Bible and I was really starting to get really euphoric and really feeling the Holy Spirit and really understanding the truth for the first time in my life. But um, the brainwashing and uh, I believe heavy demonic oppression that Jehovah's Witness religion carries with itself um, of course wouldn't let me be so at times I was really terrified and I was really thinking that they have the truth that I need to stay that God will destroy me demons will attack me uh, just really terrible feelings and on the other hand I was really euphoric because I knew that they don't have the truth because I knew that I found God because I knew that I have the Bible that I have a relationship with the true living God I have the Holy Spirit of God so I was really torn and I was really struggling and it would go on for a long time but this part the Jehovah's Witness oppression would lessen over time so I think maybe in two years it was almost gone it was slowly slowly going I would have to read the Bible um, read the explanations why Jehovah's Witness doctrine is wrong. That website, I found all the website by uh, ex Jehovah's Witnesses. By the way, there are many, many, many ex Jehovah's Witnesses who are wonderful Christians now, who are pastors, who are just amazing people, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, they they can be found. They they are there. There's many of them because uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. They say if you leave, if you become an apostate, you'll never find happiness. You'll find some home church, some weird group of home study people, and they will never find never they will never find anything. They will never offer you anything better. All of this will fall apart, and that's all that will happen. You'll end up a drug addict, lonely, 
desperate person somewhere alone in a dark room. That's how that's how apostates are seen, and it's not true at all. Um, as a Jehovah's Witness, you'd never know that there are people who are wonderful Christians, who are wonderful people, who have leading very happy lives, who left because you would never be told. And um, yeah, that's 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 the sad part of it. And uh, around the same time, I found out about a book written by a person who was uh, a member of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses was and then left and he wrote a book he became an apostate and of course as a Jehovah's Witness I never knew about such a person I never knew that his uncle is um, uncle or someone in his close family is still in the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses his name is Fred Franz he is already um, dead he he's no longer there but his book uh, crisis of conscience is still there and reading this book made everything crystal clear he really like he went through exactly the same thing or uh, as I did not not exactly the same um, doctrinal problems but the conscience uh, that he describes the the real looking for God and the real struggle uh, that one goes through when trying to find God and leaving Jehovah's Witnesses is just shocking, is amazing. It's really, it's really an amazing book. Really highly recommend it. It really helps break the uh, the brainwash. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I found this book as well, and that was an, an amazing uh, help. And yes, so at this stage, um, I started, um, as, I, as I said, I started uh, reading other Christian sources, started watching videos by extra house witnesses and so on. And so I decided that I want to go to a Baptist church. Um, so I went there and then I ended up reading some other sources um, that were maybe not so good because uh, I ended up believing that I need to go to the Catholic Church where I also went. I spent, I think, six months there and then I came out again and looking in my pursuit of finding the truth and I went to a, um, to a charismatic church again. Um, now, I really want to stress that I don't think, because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that you really need to be somewhere, that you need to, that th there is a place where you need to be to be saved. And that is just not the case at all. You don't have to belong to a particular church to be saved, to a particular denomination, to a particular group of people to be saved. No, that's not true. You need to have a relationship with God. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to believe that he died for your sins. You need to believe that he redeemed you. That through believing in this, that through believing in him, you are saved. So that is how we get saved. I know that for a Jehovah's Witness who is heavily relying on his works, on the hours, on the amount of hours he spends in ministry, on the good things that he does and the bad things that he doesn't do. Um, I know that this is really difficult to understand, but this is really, really the truth. Now, there are lots of Christians um, around the world, and if you go to a church that has a wrong understanding of, a, of one doctrine, you are not going to be condemned. So, if you are somebody who is an ex Jehovah's Witness and you are panicking to find the right church, as I was, then don't worry because really this is not how you get saved. You are going to find a group of nice Christians. You are going to find um, the the right uh, belief um, system as long as you're not going to belong to a sect or a cult. Which of us witnesses are a cult. So as long as you're not or to the Catholic Church. So as long as you're going to
in a group of Christians who are who really believe in the Bible, who go against the Catholic Church, so are Protestant Christians, they don't need to be Baptist or this. Many Christians, they don't name themselves anymore. Um, you need to know what's in the Bible. You need to read your Bible. You need to know that there are, uh, the, uh, you will be, you need to be baptized with uh, water and with the Holy Spirit. So you would have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, that's for if anybody believes in some cessationist ideas. So these are the things that you need to know. And I'm sure you're going to find a nice church because most churches believe this. And you're going to find your place. And um, I did. I, um, I do just the things that I mentioned now. So I believe in these things. Uh, I um, went into um, evangelizing as well, so um, I really like to evangelize um, with other Christians. Um, I went to this um, course for evangelists, um, that's where I met my husband who was leading that, uh, that course. Uh, so we are now together, he, he's in ministry, um, that's my life now. Um, we have a little daughter, um, I am very happy in God and we are very happy in God and we want to live for God and we want to do what's right, we want to minister to people and that's it. And even um, Christian life is not easy but we have God, we have the living God living inside of us, we are saved forever we are not condemned because of not meeting requirements of any human religion. We are not saved on the basis of works. And we are just free. We are free in God. So I really hope that if um, you are a Jehovah's Witness watching this, or if you are an ex Jehovah's Witness who cannot find their place, or maybe is an atheist, because of the terrible trauma and terrible wrong teachings that you went through um, that you were subjected to and terrible trauma that you went through I really hope and pray that you will find peace in God and it's really not difficult of course Satan is attacking us um, really badly with as he did attack me with all the um, fear and panic and he really doesn't want you to find the truth but if you persist, if you pray to God, He is going to answer. He is going to uh, help you find a way out. He will show you the right people. He will give you the right verses. He will never forsake you. Never. If you look for Him, and sometimes even when you don't look, He is always going to help you. So do not worry. Do not be afraid. Jehovah's Witnesses do not have the truth. They cannot save you. They cannot condemn you. God is not going to condemn you because you are going to leave them. So please just pursue the truth. Read your Bible. And yes, that's that's my message. And I hope um, you're going to find it useful. And I hope this um, testimony is going to help somebody out there. So thank you so much for watching. And maybe... Um, in the future, maybe I could post something about... Um, doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses um, maybe in some other video so thank you so much for watching and I pray that you'll find your place bye